Hey up Woodlanders. I'm still feeling a bit rough this morning. It's Monday morning. We went away over the weekend. Been up to Chester Zoo. Surprise for my daughter. The reason for going up to Manchester because there was a concert, uh, a band playing called One Republic, American band. You might have heard of them. And we've been keeping it a secret from her, so we didn't tell her until about five minutes before we got there. So she was absolutely in her element. She was exhausted, I must admit. It was a very late Sunday night, and we got back very early hours of this morning me having a banging egg cold all weekend <coughs> but we did some amazing things but well, this morning <coughs> been to the timber yard got some timber for a couple of jobs i got a railway sleeper job then i've still got to make the panels for leicester there's two more of them that's today's job i was meant to be running a hazel course this saturday but that's been cancelled due to lack of take up which that's another subject we'll come to in a bit later on Normally, by this time of year, it's now getting on for almost May. Bean poles have always nearly sold out by now. People, are, I'm scratching, trying to find bean poles. I've got hundreds left. Hundreds and hundreds of bean poles left over. Now, I don't know whether this is true or not, but there's a website called Copies Products, and I've mentioned this before. It's always worked absolutely brilliantly. And so what people do is they search on, on their internet searches bean poles in near me that's that one fairly common one and what this copies product website would always be about t second or third in the listings and what it would do is it would link your local coppice worker who advertises their wares uh, with your nearest so somewhere nearest to you and your coppice worker anyway it's always worked brilliantly but this year last year what happened is NC fed which is the National Coppice Federation I believe it was the, that group of people that took all that sort of, I don't know what you would call it, that group, took over the running of this Coppice product website. Look, to all intents and purposes, it looks exactly the same, but I know it's different because there was a weekend when it was, or a while when it was down, you know, the website didn't exist. So there's definitely a, there was a handover period and they said that nothing would change, but they would be making some improvements. Well. The improvements, to me, seem to be less traffic. Others are saying that they've, they've experienced a downturn this year, but they're ascribing it to other things like, excuse me, so people are doing less in the gardens, they're doing less DIY stuff, the whole allotment thing has gone a little bit different now. They're also saying people are getting tight for money, so they're not splashing out on things. Whereas I thought it might work the other way. Because people are tight on money, people might start growing more. But yeah, we've got lo loads left over. Now, I think I might sell most of them. I'm hopeful. I bet you're wishing that wish that idiot would blow his nose. It just won't come out. It's just, it's just rammed tight inside there. Let's get these off. So I'm afraid today it's a bit more of the same. It's that time of year where we're more panel making. So we're going to get these finished. I'll try and fast track that for you so you haven't got to watch the whole process again because you're probably getting a bit bored with me making panels now. Um, however, it's a necessary part of the woodland life. Lots and lots of woodland goodness coming your way. So I'll get a wiggle on and we'll get these panels done. Um, let's see if try and get this one done before lunch. I was going to have a chat to you as well today about, um, I had to call it a holiday blues. I used to work in a bakery. Sunday night was my night shift. I used to hate it. I hate it. I come back from holiday once. We went one of our first holidays abroad. We went to Kos in Greece. And uh, I, I loved it there. Oh, it was just like heaven. And I came back from holiday. And what my first shift was the Sunday night shift on my own in the bakery. I've never felt so miserable in all my life. Sort of like the point of crying. Of course, we've come back from this weekend. I've been looking forward to it for ages. 
quite a special treat really, too for us. Don't get out often, you know. These uh, country folk don't get out much. I drove back late last night and I got home and I thought, oh that's it, it's all over. All I have left is a few photographs. So I might have a video and a few memories. And that's it, that's all you got left. And you, you just want to relive that same moment again. But you know you can't. And I don't know whether that's what they call the holiday blues. But it just leaves you a little bit flat, a bit sort of like, oh. I don't want life to carry on boring. I want life to carry on exciting. I suppose you come to realise that in this world that we live in, the Western world, where you're constantly pumped with you must have this and you must have that and you must have this. And they, uh, they sort of try and push the consumer world at you. Sort of system that means you've got to spend and spend and spend and earn and spend. Well, what you're left with is an experience. So I have no tangible thing from the weekend. I don't. I don't have any memento as such as I don't have any nothing I can hold in my hands in a way and yet for me that's given me the greatest amount of pleasure knowing that I've had an experience with people I love um, yeah quite interesting isn't it, that so uh, there's a guy on uh, the TV doing an advert at the minute, what's his name? Ewan McGregor, that's him. It's some sort of advert, I don't even know what for. I think it might even be holidays. And he walks through these different things about you, you'll you'll never regret buying or not buying. Will you regret not buying a flat screen TV or something? Oh, it's quite a clever advert in that they're trying to sell you experiences and not things. Um which for them is just all about money and turnover again, but life is more about experiences, friendships, getting to know people, than ever it is about the latest Lego set, because I like Lego as well, you see. And I still like Lego, but this weekend was better than all my Lego sets. And I just thought I'd share that with you. What experience have you had that left you feeling with a holiday blues and what do you do about it tell me tell me what you think tell me what your experiences are all right so that is all of the Leicester panels complete so, have a quick wander down this is a uh, swamp cypress Another one of my favourite trees. I think I might have mentioned this one before, but it's just coming out into leaflet. And I think I'm right in saying somebody said the timber's quite good for outdoor use as well. Oh look, the aces are all coming out. I had it for the leaves really, just because I got a couple. Oh, watch that. I not believe how much work I've still got to do up here. My own work, and I just, uh, just don't think I'm gonna have a chance again. Gotta get all that chestnut out of the bottom end, yeah. Move pallets with the pallet times. I was sort of hoping to try and get some time in May, but as it is at the moment, I can see the whole of May being evaporated making panels. I talk to you because you listen to me. I've got three giant nine foot panels to make, but at least I haven't got to fit those. Then I've got another four panels to make. They've got to go down to, I think, Suffolk. That's another week's work. Not complaining, but of course I can't get my own work done because this is all now on a bit of a deadline. Sprint to the finish to get your hazel used up before it all goes too dry. It gets too dry to split, and it gets too dry to weave, really. Morning, I took these railway sleepers out, and now I've got to come put them back in again. That's for planning for me, that.
that's it. I've done for today. The way up, the air's going to wobbly. This morning, I've got to uh, build a raised bed. So, if you see that, sort of an eight by four ish railway sleepers, and then that'll all be filled with soil, then ready for uh, veg growing, I believe. So, I'll do a time lapse and we'll get this bolted together. happy with that well done absolutely lovely lovely couple so welcoming so kind generous tease and chatter and always ask about you and how your family's doing great people some panels for the job in Burton next so we'll get the frames done to get those panels made yesterday afternoon uh, the camera battery went flat so you didn't see the end but this morning's job is to I'm off to Clifton Campbell for some gardening work a bit of lawn mowing a bit of pruning a bit of weeding so I'll bring you along for that <coughs> stop made it she's got some really nice plants and bulbs going on in the garden and then this afternoon I've got to split some rods because Friday hopefully is a panel repair job Ed Cole's getting to me. I feel exhausted now. Back up the woods again this afternoon uh, after finishing that job earlier at Clifton Campbell. Get these panels out um, and split some hazel. You know, when you're not well, you just don't feel like doing much. That's, that's today. But I've got to because I've got some mega deadlines to try and meet. I'm getting well behind the schedule here. So here's an interesting topic for discussion today. You might have guessed I'm not really a city bloke. Me going to the city is a bit like Crocodile Dundee going to New York. I don't like it, I don't get on with it. So of course, city life and all of its different challenges kind of hit you in the face really. You meet up with quite a degree of opulence, there's a lot of very, looked to be very wealthy people in that area. And that's fine, I, I'm not judging anyone on that. And then you've got the band who are reasonably successful all the world over. They do world tours now. And they've got their tour bus, which is buzzes, like three of them. And then there was six wagons full of kit. Um, and then the, the stark contrast of it all was we were standing in the queue outside, just waiting for the doors to open to check the tickets and such. And this chap comes up and, and I could hear him asking people for stuff and I thought, oh, it's clearly somebody who wants something from me and it's either ticket touts or somebody who wants money or he wants us to try and sell you some plastic rubbish as mementos. I just thought I have no idea who this guy is. Anyway, I said to my daughter, I said, just turn around away from him 
so that I was worried that he might use her as leverage to sell me something I didn't really want and I then thought I'm going to find it very awkward to say no because he's captured the attention of a young child to to, to use as leverage so I was, this was all running through my mind in a split second and anyway, it turns out what he wanted to do was read poetry so he, said, he, he clocked me eye and he says can I read some poetry for a few pounds and I was like I'm okay thanks and he moved on he was very polite moved on up the line and he was asking the others and anyway because my daughter's 10 and it's that age where everything's a question like why did he do that and why did you do that so we had a really interesting little discussion while we started in the line about we'll call him the poetry man what it does for me because I'm a country bloke who lives in surroundings like this and I don't speak to anybody but a camera all day is sort of a social awkwardness about there's a guy who wants to read me poetry for money because he's clearly desperate I mean his hair had been cut for an awful long time it was very matted together he looked pretty grubby and what struck us after he'd gone was we knew nothing about him we didn't know what his name was we didn't know and then that's what I find quite awkward in a way the ones that live on the streets homeless I want to know more about them. I want to know who they are, how do they get there? How do they see themselves getting out of it if they want to? Are they are they happy? How do they manage every day? What keeps them going? What stops them from just fading away? What what gives them the motivation to just keep going every day when you've got to basically rely on somebody else's handout just to get enough food to eat? They're different because they choose to live a different lifestyle in a way. And that's not might not be a choice that they woke up in the morning and think I'm going to be homeless today, but it's sort of a a life's direction. It just took took them that way, and we came to the conclusion that I'd misjudged him, and I shouldn't have been quite so prejudging about who he was and what he wanted. And I should have just clocked him in the eye. I should have just been more friendly, more humane, really. Anyway, that got me thinking, and I apologised to my daughter because I said I misjudged him. And in it, and I, we talked about all the reasons why. We analysed sort of the psychology behind why I felt awkward in that particular setting. And then he walked up and down the line, and I don't think he read poetry to anyone, as far as I could tell. Now, poetry doesn't really do an awful lot for me. So I would probably feel more awkward with somebody reading poetry to me than actually giving them a few quid to go and get themselves what they want. It really made me think about, I must make a concerted effort to try and change, but homelessness and living on the streets is a really interesting scenario, really. So my, one of my concerns is, if I give them some money, what are they gonna do with it? And I heard an argument on the radio once about this. If you choose to give them some money, you've got to dignify them by allowing them to choose what to do with the money so of course they might they might want to use it on drugs for all I know they might want to use it on drink alcohol like so somebody said to this radio station once oh well you should don't give them money go and buy them something to eat or ask them what you want to buy them from the local shop and then somebody else says no no that's you're taking away you're making a choice for them you've got to let them choose for themselves what they want to do with the money and if they choose to spend it on drugs and drink and that gets them through the day so although that sits a bit awkward with me i understand the reasoning of letting them be let them choose their own pathway let them make their own choices with whatever income they get and further down the line, we noticed, I noticed a guy sitting on the floor and I thought, well, surely it's not just some bloke fed up with waiting, standing up, getting into the concert. And anyway, sure enough, it were another chappy on the floor and he, he were in a bit of a state and he got his plastic cup. And by this point, I'd plucked up enough courage and told myself off enough times and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this differently. So I noticed a couple of other people just putting a few quid in, 50 P's and things like that, into his plastic cup. And they didn't really make eye contact with him. They just sort of, Hey up mate, sort of thumbs up. And he did thank them and he was but he didn't make eye contact with them. And I thought, well, 
I'm not really sure about this. So I managed to find a couple of quid in my back pocket. And that doesn't make me particularly generous. Um, it was just what I got. And so I knelt down with him and I says, Hey, mate, I says, how are you? He says, okay. He says, enjoy your concert. He says, thanks ever so much. I says, that's all right. I says, what's your name? So he told me his name. His name was Mikey. Uh, I shook his hand because I just thought, well, that's what I would do. And, and I did. And I was happy with that. And he was grateful. And he did look me in the eye. I think he was a bit like, what do I do here? And then there was even more around the corner, but of course we sort of ran out of time and, and I'd run out of cash by that point. I don't think they accept cards, do they, really? That was a joke, by the way. This is an interesting discussion for you. Have you met homeless people? Have you ever helped them out? And what have you done? And how do you feel when a homeless person comes to you and asks you for something? Or, or what would you do? So I'm just interested in the whole homeless discussion what would you do? What would you like to do? What do you wish you could do? What have you done? Anything like that, really. I'm just really fascinated to see what, how you react to that. So by all means, fill it up the comments below, um, and I'll try and follow along in the comments because that's, I feel, a very, very interesting social discussion. It made me think. So we're all done here, got some rods that will go as the uprights, the zales we call them, and then I've got some rods that have been split or cleft for the weavers and that's for a panel repair on Friday. We've got a piece of oak ready for that repair I was talking about earlier. Uh, they're all ready for next week's weaving, those ones there are all ready for next week's fitting and that one there is all ready for the gardener's bodies demo gate. Can you see in the background? The, uh, the may tree is nearly out. This is called Hawthorn. So not that, because that's an oak tree. This one here is called Hawthorn. Uh, Critagus monogyna. And um, I'm sure you wanted a Latin lesson today. But this is nearly out, look. So the flowers are just about to break out. Now you might have heard an expression in the UK, don't cast a clout till May's out. Now, I used to get misconstrued by that, and I used to think, because what it means is, don't, don't put your cardigans away until May is out. Now, I used to think it was the month of May, but it's not, it's May, the May tree, this one. When the flowers are out in full, that's what, the, that's what the phrase means. Don't cast a cloud, don't put your cardigans away until the Mayflower is in full bloom. And after then, you're pretty well guaranteed there won't be a frost. Now, I'm not a weatherman, but it's fair, there's one up there, look, they're out just up there, can you see that? That's your little lesson for today, anyway. <laughs> Let's go. Interesting one yesterday. I put a better picture on my Facebook advert for the bean poles, and because normally I've sold out of bean poles by now, and I've, I reckon I've still got about 200 left. And I did a Facebook post on it the other day on about coppice products and whether the website had changed, changed the way it searches somehow, because the, the inquiries are very much lower this year. Anyway, I never really came to a full con conclusion on that. But some people say it's to do with veg growers and time and no lockdown anymore and things like that. A lot of squeaks in the van, isn't there? Um, so it could be all of that. Anyway, I've still got about 200 left, which for me is, I mean, it's like 300 quid. So I want to try and, anyway, I put a Facebook advert. I've always got a marketplace advert. So I refreshed that, put some new pictures on, shared it on my own page, shared it on my business page, shared it onto a couple of local advertising pages and um, I've had a quite a few inquiries last night so hopefully I might have sold about another 30 ish maybe another 40 so it's quite good I'm glad about that because I was sort of worried that you do all this cutting in the winter and then you don't actually sell the product you've been cutting and spent days and days cutting it I mean bee poles if I don't sell them basically there's no money left in the coppice That's the original. 
and that's what would have been here in these oak frames. So we'll replace this one in that one. Very smart. Thanks for watching this week. I've not been very well, so I've not been up to my usual uh, hilarious form. But I do appreciate you watching. If you're able to, try and enjoy the woods this week. See you on the next one.